Okay. Um, hey guys, we're going to present this and get started. This is uh, going over math CDB questions 14 through 21. Let's waste no time and we'll get cracking here. Slide number one. Okay. The ward, or number 14 actually, the ward elementary school PTA hosted a 5K fun run. The PTA bought water bottles for the 2,472 runners that entered the 5K. The water bottles are packaged 24 per case. How many cases need to be purchased so that each runner receives one water bottle? Easy. Okay, so we're going to do the get strategy here. Okay, and with the get strategy, I'm looking at groups, each, and total. Oops, each, and total. Now, the thing I want you to remember is that total is the main one. That's usually the one that's going to give us the operation of what we're doing. Um, so for the total, if we don't have the total, then we're going to be multiplying to find the total. If we do have the total, then we'll be dividing that total into groups and find out how much is in each group. So looking at my question, do I have the total number of runners? I do. It's 2,472. So that means I'm going to be dividing. So I take my 2,472 and I'm going to group uh, so I write this into a long division problem, just like so. And my steps for long division, divide, multiply, subtract, bring it down, and then I come back up here and start over for, for each uh, place value that I'm working with. So let's start with uh, 24, right? I have a two-digit divisor, so how many groups of 24 are in two? Zero. And I'm trying to keep my numbers as straight as possible because I don't want to mess up a place value here. How many groups of 24 are in 24? That's 1. 1 times 24 is 24. Okay, I can subtract that. That's my subtract part. 24 minus 24, that's 0. Next, I bring down. So we'll bring down the 7. And now i got to find out how many groups of 24 are in 7. Because I, once I bring it down, I come back to the top and start over. So when I say D for divide... I'm actually trying to find groups of. How many groups of 24 are in 7? That is 0. There are 0 groups of 24 in 7. 0 times 24 is 0. Then I would subtract and bring down, and I'm down to my last uh, numbers here, 72. So I'll let you finish this, and we'll see if you get the correct answer. I walked you there. Now it's time for you to make the correct choice. All right, hope you chose it correctly. We know it can't be 13, and I don't think it's this one because these two, 102 and 103, are pretty close. So how many groups of 24 are in 72? Hopefully you did your math and figured out that is three. There are three groups of 24 in 72. I can prove it to you by doing this, 24 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4 is 7. Ba -ba 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 -ba. 3 times 24 is 72. Subtract, I have zero remainder. Good, I don't have to deal with that. And my answer is 103. Yay, you or me. Next one. Number 15. In a video game, players earn points every time they complete another level. The table below shows the levels completed and the total score for any player. And I'm looking at the relationships here because I'm going from 2 to 800. Interesting. Uh, the relationship between the total points earned and the levels completed creates a pattern that is additive, multiplicative, additive, multiplicative. So if I get rid of one of those, that actually puts me down to a 50-50, right? It could be one or two questions, um, one of the two that are correct. So what is this, additive or multiplicative? I'm looking at the pattern. How do I go from 2 to 800? Am I adding something to get there, or am I multiplying something to get there? Well, I can tell you that doesn't look like add, so let's try that again. Am I adding something to get there, or multiplying? I kind of see the math facts here, 2 and 8, 4, 16, 6, 24, 8, 32. I kind of see that happening there. looks like I'm multiplying times 4. That's what it looks like to me. And I can see that, but it's actually not 4. It's actually multiplying times 400 because 2 times 400 is 800. Okay, so then I know it's not additive. I know that my pattern is not additive. It is multiplicative. 
But is it B or D? Now's the time for you to make a choice. I'll wait for you. Okay, hopefully you chose correctly. If I'm multiplying all of these by 400, 400, 400, I only have two choices. Is it multiplicative because the total points earned is 800 times the number of levels? Or is it 400 times the number of levels? So the number of levels is 2. So is it 800 times? Or is it 400 times? So hopefully you chose the correct answer, and you put D. It is 400 times the number of levels completed. All right. Good job. Good try. If you didn't get it right, that's all right. You'll get it next time. If you got it correct, great work. Keep it up. Okay, next one, number 16. Mrs. Patel needs to rent tables for the 503 guests who will attend a graduation celebration. Sounds amazing. Wear your mask. Stay six feet apart. If Ms. Patel seats 15 guests at each table, how many tables should she rent to seat all the guests? To seat all the guests, Jerry. All of them. Okay, I don't know what to do here, so I'm going to bust out my get strategy. The T is for total. Total. And if I know the total, I'm going to be dividing. If I don't know the total, then I'm going to be multiplying to find it. Do I know the total number of guests? Yes, I do. Total number of guests are 503. And I need to seat uh, 15 guests at one table. So I'm going to divide this by 15 and see how many tables I need. Now, 15 groups in 5, there are 0. 15 groups in 50, ooh, that's something i got to check out. So when you're doing your guess and check, you know, normally I'd be like, I don't know, let me just try five and see how that works. Like, yeah, you can do that. That's guess and check, right? Obviously. But look at the number that's in the place value that we're working with. Every number here is three. Hello, test taking strategy. This has to be a three because all my choices have three here in the tens place. And I'm in the tens place. So let's check it out. Let's get rid of this five whack and let's work with that three because I think I might be onto something here. 15 times 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Funny how that worked out. 3 times 3 is 1 plus 1. It's 4. Okay, 45 is close to 50 without going over. So uh, that's right. 3 times 15 is 45. You can subtract that bad boy. 50 minus 45, easy, that's 5. If you think that's magic, that's because I regrouped from here to make a 4, and I made this 0 into a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. Same thing, right? I just did it in my head as 50 minus 45. Those are numbers you should be able to work with in fifth grade. Then I bring down the 3, and I have 53. Well, this is it. I can't get any closer than 45, because if I add another 15, it's going to be too big. But let me just check, just to make sure. If I had four groups, uh, that would be 20. That would be 60. That's too big. So I'm going to leave it up to you to find the right answer. I put you halfway there. Good luck. Okay, hopefully you chose the correct answer. How many groups of 15 are in 53? We're going to say 3 again because we know that's 45. And we can subtract. 53 minus 45 is uh, 8. 8. Oh, uh, hold on, Mr. B. I have a remainder of 8. Okay, something's wrong here. I have 503 guests, but I have a remainder of eight guests. But doesn't it tell me here that I have to seat all the guests? So 33 tables is not going to seat all the guests because I have eight guests remaining. So I might as well bump it up to 34 guests. I'm amazing. You're amazing. We're both amazing. All right, let's go to the next one. Maybe. Number 17. Wyatt is thinking of a prime number. Oh, wait, did we do this one already? I think I feel like I skipped one. Number 16? Yeah, number 16. Where's number 17? Okay, here we go. Wyatt is thinking of a prime number uh, between 25 and 40. 
which of the following could Wyatt's number be? Man, so many people miss this question. Redonkulous, but here's why. Tricky, man. You're between 25 and 40. So get rid of anything less than 25. And that's not between 25 and 40. So I'm left with three numbers, 27, 33, 37. Remember, if it's prime, it has a factor of one times itself. That's it. That has to be the only two factors. If it has other factors, it can't be. 27, my friends, is a 9 times 3. So that already has 9 times 3 as a factor. It cannot be that. So I'm left with two choices, 33 or 37. So if I did a factor tree on 33, I could do 1 times 33, 2 times nothing. Oh, but I could do a 3 times 11. 1, 2, that's already more than one factor, so it cannot be 33. So really, what other choice do I have, boys and girls, except to choose D? Good job if you did. Next one. Oh, on her homework page last night, Greta solved the following problem. Uh, eight tenths multiplied by seven tenths equals five and six tenths. Okay, which statement describes uh, Greta's product? So there's two choices to say correct and two choices to say incorrect. So let me solve it first and see if she is correct. I'm going to set it up like this. Eight times seven with the decimals. Uh, 7 times 8, that's a math fact, is 56. I have two place values, 1, 2, so there's my actual, my actual answer is 56 hundredths. Um, so I'll leave it up to you to pick the right answer. I might have just given it away, maybe. Hopefully you got the right answer, which is she is not correct, so she's not, nope, oops, I'm sorry. Um... She is correct. No, that's not the right choice. She is she is incorrect, right? Fifty-six should be the product, fifty-six hundredths should be the product, or fifty-six thousandths should be the product. Uh, pretty sure it's fifty-six hundredths, which is H. So good on me. Next one. We're burning, we're burning through these. Let's get it. All right. Number 19, oh, which shows the correct model for three and four hundredths divided by four? Man, we struggled on this one. We're dividing by four. That means four equal groups, right? We're doing four equal groups. Now, if I do this equation like this, divided by... 4 equals blank. This is my total, right? These are, this is my G for groups. And my answer is going to be how much are in each, how many of those are in each group. So if I'm looking for four equal groups, boys and girls, which of these answer choices does not have four equal groups? This one does not, and this one does not. But B and C do have four equal groups. So go ahead and choose what you think the right answer is, and I'll wait for you patiently. Okay, I waited long enough. Did you label these like you're supposed to? I mean, you probably can't do it on your um, the test if, it's, if you're taking it online, but you could definitely write in your journal and say, okay, for B, I have four equal groups, which is one hole, two hole, three holes, three holes, and my decimal is one, two, three, four hundredths. So uh, for answer choice B, I have three groups of three and four hundreds. Okay. And for C, I have four equal groups of what? Um, what is this? One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths. And one, two, three, four, five, six hundreds. Okay. So for C, I have four equal groups of 76 hundreds. So take a look at what I gave you for a choice of B and C. Take a look at the equation I put up there. Which one of those do you think is the model for four equal groups that equal three and four hundred, uh, thousands? I'm sorry, hundreds. I'll wait.
Okay, so I don't have to actually do any math here. I shouldn't have to because these four equal groups, if I add up all these four equal groups here, the number is going to be bigger than three, obviously, because this is already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's too big. But if I add up these four equal groups, I probably am going to get three and uh, four hundredths which would mean that would have to be the right answer because this is four equal groups that are the total, the total, right, the total of three and four hundredths. But, you know, if I wanted to check, I could. Real easy. Do this. Seventy-six hundredths multiplied by four. Twenty-four, seven times four is twenty-eight plus two is thirty. Two decimal places. Thirty. So you can see now that the correct answer has to be C because that's four equal groups of 76 hundredths that will equal the total of 300, I'm sorry, three and four hundredths. All right, that was tricky, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, that was tricky. All right, number 20. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna let you read this because this is dramatic. This is dramatic. Look at this novel you're reading over here. But look at the question. What is the total cost of all the tickets and candy bars? Okay, um, hello, PEMDAS. So all I gotta do is solve it. So yes, you can read the question. You can read the question 10 times if you really want to, but the question is asking me to solve this PEMDAS problem. So do I really need the story behind all this? I mean, not really. If it's a PEMDAS problem, I'm gonna solve it um, to look for the answer of. Uh, the total cost of tickets and candy bars. And no, I don't think I need to read that whole thing. But please feel free to if you want. Now, sometimes you'll see me do this, but not all the time. I'll put some brackets here because brackets go outside of PEMDAS. Here in our equation, we have brackets, which means everything here has to be done. We have to get everything in the brackets down to one number before we can move on to the other part of the equation. We'll call this the other part. I'm going to circle it. Okay, so inside of our brackets, we actually have parentheses. So we have to do this part first. So 575 times two, I'm gonna do my work over here. Multiply that times two. Two times five is 10, two times seven is 14, plus one is 15, and two times five is 10, plus one is 11. I'm dealing with money here, it looks like, uh, so it's gonna be $11.50, two place values. Okay, so this is $11.50 and 50 cents plus six. This is my, oops, that's not a bracket, Mr. B. Let's make that into a bracket. Bam, bam. And then I'm gonna do my plus three times 220, okay? So now I have in the bracket what I have left, 11.50 plus six. Easy, I'll do that over here. I'll make this $6 since I'm dealing with money. That's zero. This is second grade math here, boys and girls. Bring the decimal down. Six plus one is seven, and one plus nothing is one. Okay, so I've added the brackets, and I'm down to $17.50, which is one number. So now I can work on this part here, three times 220. I have to follow PEMDAS, so I'm looking for parentheses first. Good luck. Why don't you solve the rest and see if you get the right answer. All right, boys and girls, it looks like you should have come off to the side here and done a little bit of quick calculations, a little bit 220 times 3, 3 times 0, 0, 3 times 2, 6, and 3 times 2, 6. Okay, so that's $6.60 here, and I'm adding seventeen fifty. Oh, I think I got the right answer, Mr. B. I hope I did. I'm running out of room, though, so I'm going to put this way up here on the top. $17.50 plus $6.60. Zero plus zero, zero. Five plus six is 11. And uh, bring this decimal straight down. Seven plus one is eight plus six is 14. And one plus one is two. So $24.10, is that an answer choice? Yes, it is, and it is a correct one. Good luck. I mean, good job. Okay, last but not least, let's get this last one done. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, 
At Freddy's food truck, 12 tacos. Wait a minute. Do you say tacos or tacos? Tacos? Tacos. At Freddy's food truck, 12 tacos cost $13.08. Each taco costs the same amount. What is the total cost for one taco? <laughs> okay. Um, look at my answer choices. They're, they're all small. Oh, well, this one's small. This is small. This is small. This is big. $13. The question is, what is the cost for one taco? It says 12 of them are $13. So can one taco be $13? Nope. I already got rid of an answer choice. Easy. Now I'm left with uh, three choices. So it's either 19 cents for 12 tacos, $1.90 or $1.09. Now I could use some 100% use some mental math. And I know that 19 cents is not enough for one taco. That doesn't make any sense, even if I was like at the store to buy that. But let's let's figure out what we're doing here. So we need to figure out if we're adding or multiplying groups, each total. If I don't have the total, then I'm multiplying. If I do have the total of in the word problem, then I'm dividing. Do I have the total cost of 12 tacos? Yes, I do. It's $13.08. So that means I'm dividing. $13.08 divided by 12. Okay, so uh, Paul Abdul said it best, right? Division straight up. Now tell me, going to put the decimal in the top. Oh, 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 now I've got to figure out how many groups of 12 are in one. Sorry, I didn't mean to change the mood like that, but it happens. Okay, let's change the colors. 12 is our divisor, 12 groups into one. That doesn't work, that's a zero. 12 groups into 13, there's one group. 12 and 13, one times 12 is 12. And subtract 13 minus 12 is one. Uh, what does it say? Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring it down. So bring down the zero. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to stop. You solve the rest. Good luck putting the answer choice in. And uh, see if you get it right. Okay, welcome back, boys and girls. Let's finish this problem. I have a one in my tens place, or my ones place. I'm sorry, this is dollars. So I have a one dollar here. One dollar. So it cannot be A. I was right about that assumption. So it's either C or it's either D. Oops, that's supposed to be a question mark. Now, here's the trick. Here's how you know if you're right or wrong. When you figure out this part, how many groups of 12 are in 10? Zero. There's, that's not big enough. There's zero groups of 12 and 10. Zero times 12 is zero. So I already can kind of tell um, by looking at this, one of these might be the right answer. Um, okay, so 10 minus 0 is 10. Bring down the 8. How many groups of 12 or 108? Now look, I can go over here and guess and check all day long. I can multiply by 7. I can multiply by 8. I can multiply by 6. Sure, but look at my answer choice. It's either going to be a 9 or it's going to be a 0. That's all that's left. Well, it can't be a 0 because 0 times 12 is 0, and that leaves me with the remainder. No, 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 no. So it's got to be 9, right? Let's see. 12 times 9. If I'm wrong, sue me. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. 108. Ooh, we're good, boys and girls. We are good. 9 times 12 is 108. We have zero remainder. Thank goodness. And our answer is what? It's a dollar nine. D. Hopefully that's what you put on the test because this was an easy problem. All right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you did well. Uh, stay tuned for the next seven questions. Bye-bye. Um,